Welcome to a boat by the river. We're building our 40 foot wooden sailing boat down in southern Tasmania. We hope you enjoy our videos, like, subscribe and even check out our Patreon page if you're feeling like some more content. So what happened there? What happened here? Um, we had our laundry box, which was really beautiful, uh, and it was done. But we can't find anywhere to put our diesel heater, and this is, I think, we think, the only spot for it to go. Um, and I kind of wanted to do it because I'm building a wardrobe here with wiring and sort of a closet area. And we'd like the diesel heater to be mounted on this bulkhead here with the flue going through the bulkhead and then up so that radiant heat can escape into the cabin area. Um, we just need height on the diesel heater, that's a big thing, is getting enough um, draw and enough height on it. So keeping it quite low is fairly important and we've heard from people that the flue actually gives a lot of heat, not the unit itself. It's just funny, you just run out of spaces to put it. It's no point putting it down near the companionway because you'll just lose heat. And So anyway, I had to rip off my work and now I'm rebuilding the laundry seat, we call it, a bit further back to here somewhere so that the diesel heater can fit in here in a nice little corner. I think it'll be quite nice, actually. Um, but for that to build the box further forward you'd have to you have to extend the bulkhead yeah so now I'm moving the bulkhead but mainly that's for this oh. cabinet so that we've got more depth on the cabinet because right now if I didn't have this here that edge would be a long way in and then you're hitting your toes and your head before you're actually on the cabinet but now I have to work out how to bring this out a little bit more because this is not enough for a, someone to sit on that little bit. So I'm thinking about bringing out a corner, sort of like a bit of a corner post action here and then bring it in like that and maybe even I'll just corner post it again, just make it symmetrical, I'm not sure. What about picking up the lid and seeing if you turn that round from the previous yeah, you can the see. Lid, I'm not going to let the lid be the thing that stops us. I definitely want to use it again, but I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to build that seat around the lid. If that makes sense. If there's another way to make it more sensible, because it's so close to being big enough, but I don't have any more plywood of this thickness. Like we have no more. So it means I have to join another bit of plywood on, but I really want to post up to here just as one more grab hold up here. Yep. So anyway. We'll have to drive to Hobart. No. No way. Not on our first day back after holiday. <laughs> no, I'm I'm doing stuff. Yeah, I didn't I didn't mean right now, I just mean we'll have to get some more plywood then at some point. I no, because this is um, uh, 18, what was it, 18 mil or 20? I'll just stop this. We hopefully should never need it ever again. That's why I'm trying not to use it. Oh, because it's only it's bulkhead. It's the bulkhead timber. And it's really expensive.
So we're redesigning the little corner here and we've got a spare diesel heater, Taylor's diesel heater. I'm just trying to see how it fits in there and before I continue with this little set E corner I think it'll be fine. I need to do a bit of research on clearances but I think it's going to be okay. So I can continue building this uh, little set E thing and it might be nice being able to sit here kind of and have a heater there next to you. It's just very hard to film in here. Apologies everyone. So I've test fitted the uh, diesel heater again. We may put it corner mounted. Once again, I need to see the specs and distances for this cupboard. Maybe I should have made it shorter, but then that's reduced seating space and storage space. It's always a compromise, trying to work out what you want to do. I've got some old screws on this wall here that I have to remove. And grinding is my least favourite part or thing to do on our boat because the bilge is full of sawdust. So if I get a spark down there and I go home, um, I might come back the next morning and my boat is burnt. People could say, why don't you take the sawdust out? Well, you know, it sort of just keeps falling down and will forever. We clean it out fairly regularly, but it's impossible to stop unless you go into the bilge every day, or we put our floor down, but we're our sole, I should say, or we put our sole down, but we're not ready for that. So what I've got is a cotton blanket or a shirt. I'm going to lay it down here. I'm going to cut these screws and then have a beer and wait for uh, no fire. We do have a fire extinguisher on board, which is nice, but wait for no fire. That's what I said. in here. One, two, three, one, two, three. My fire blanket. I mean, the odds of a fire are very small, but you know, it's just not a nice thought. Your whole life, three or four years of work going down in flames. Now I'm going to give this a quick sand so that I can start fitting a bottom plate and side plates. So I've made the laundry box. Um, bit of an episode to do it, and it's Sorry, but very hard to film within a boat on this small little thing. We don't know why we call it the laundry box, but I think it's going to be where our laundry may go, um, or just dumping piles of clothes. It's pretty strong now. I've just walled it with plywood either side. Corner posts, it'll be round, or we'll have a round on them once I remove it on each end. and screwed to the main wall here of the bunk. Because that looks a bit better, see how it's smaller than the circle now? Yeah. Don't you think? The um, little wings. Yeah. Yeah, it looks better. And then what I did last time, I actually just flexed this in a little bit, like created a bit of a... Bit of 
Reverse curve. So I'm flexing the ruler with my elbow right now. <laughs> and drawing with the same. This is something you can only learn off YouTube. It's not in any books. It's not, you can't, you don't learn this at school. Only three. Oh, well, one, one side's sort of flexed, but the other side not. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it'll be alright. Show us. Amazing. Nice. Good. Um, I'll just put it in and stay at it, I guess, for a bit. Yeah.
So it's been almost two years now we've uh, exposed, put ourselves onto YouTube um, for you people to watch, for everyone to see what we're doing and building our boat. Our channel growth is fairly stagnant. We're not, we're not really growing and we're struggling a touch with sort of breaking through and earning any form of income. Ifka is actually away for a month now trying to earn money to keep us going. I'm going to keep building the boat and avoid spending too much money on the boat and it's just my time while she keeps me and Obi fed. <laughs> um, but one way that you guys could help, and it sounds like you know, a cracked record, but if you could please just like, subscribe and comment. Just leave something to comment for us. It really helps the algorithm and helps our channel growth and hopefully helps us see a, a positive future for our YouTube channel. We're not asking for anything. We're not trying to be a massive channel. We're just sort of trying to justify producing our videos and keeping that going so that you guys can sort of hopefully learn from us and enjoy uh, watching what we're doing. And obviously the last one is our patron page. I know everyone has heard about people's patron page. It is epic and for us it really helps with the patronage more so than YouTube ad revenue. That is just, for now that's nothing. It's not even worth talking about. Our patrons are really the ones that help us um, keep going. So if you can check out the Patreon page, I mean, even there's, there's free membership there. You can have a look at the free membership and still get some exclusive content and where we are real time and what we're doing. So from all of us here, if you can just like, subscribe, leave a comment on this next video and we'll just see if we can get somewhere. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, I'm going to build a boat. I'll just, Obi has found a bed. Just down there, he's sort of like found his little nest on our scaffold. Maybe, do you want to like a. Come on, mate. Come on. Yeah, I'm recording. Look at this. There you go. One mattresses for a dog. Two mattresses for a dog. A blanket for a dog. Voila. Is it hard, mate? Is it a hard life? No. Nice. So now the uh, cabin is relatively complete. Um, I'm going to prepare some of the deck planking for the top of the cabin. It's quite interesting that here, our slab is very massive, like the concrete slab that the boat is on is humongous and it maintains its temperature for a long time. So it's either really cold or really hot, but generally it's just really cold, which is great for summer and stuff, but in winter it's a little bit tricky. Um, but what happens is our celery top wood, our deck planks, are on the um, ground, racked up, and they're absorbing a lot of this cool temperature, you know? So the moisture's in there and it sort of stays there. It doesn't dry out throughout summer. Whereas up above on the boat, upstairs, it's very hot. It's basically a desert and we have laser light coming through and tin on top, so it becomes a big oven. But that doesn't get down to the floor, um, down to the concrete slab. So, what could theoretically happen is that if we were going to lay deck planks on top of the cabin, we could rip them, you know, rip them in half, split them, thickness them, machine them, make them all beautiful, lay the deck, and then if they're already laid and we lay them too quickly, I believe they will dry out and lose their moisture really fast in the heat of summer because they're maintaining their sort of winter moisture content downstairs on the slab, they haven't actually dried out fully. So what would happen is when we take it upstairs, they will shrink and crack and it will be very sad. What we have done is we've 
um, partnered up with Oratrol and Dexole. Just gonna get rid of this chicken. Chicken gone. So what we have done is partner up with Oatrol and they have D1 and D2 Dexole. One is an impregnating oil, so as soon as we get the deck on we could oil it and keep, keep oiling it to try and help stabilise the timber. But I think what we should do right now before we think about laying uh, a deck overlay on our cabin um, is actually rip the timber up, so split it in half and rack it out to dry on top of the boat so it becomes that up there. It gets that moisture content in the sun instead of downstairs on the cold slab. And we'll probably leave it there for, uh, wouldn't, it wouldn't take long to be honest, to sort of make it stabilise and get used to that temperature. Maybe a month or so, a few weeks. Really the bit longer the better probably. And then theoretically it'll just dry out, it'll stabilise and then we can lay it, oil it and it's done. Um, you may ask why would we think about laying the deck on the cabin now? I don't know, it's just going to look good and I want to do something beautiful. We've come so far, we've put so much effort into the cabin this far that uh, why not just lay, lay the cabin top um, and then we'll just put a, a blankie or a carpet over it when we're working and when we want it to look beautiful for our cocktail party for example and um, we just roll it off and there she is and it's great when people come to visit or something we can give them an example and you as a viewers we can give you an example of what our whole boat will look like and how we're going to lay the deck with hopefully zero fastenings yep that's the dream but first things first is getting the wood dry and stable to the upstairs uh, content moisture content and that means i have to go through our pile of celery top um, that we got from a back, it's what we call backyard timber. So this celery top we sourced from someone's backyard that had been laying around for many years. Um, and he wanted, at some point he had a boat and he wanted to lay a deck and that happened to be a 40 footer. Um, but he wanted full thickness planks, so 40 mil. They were machined at by 110 or something, but we'll be able to easily split that in half and use it, it'll be quite a chunky overlay. I want to be able to sand our deck, possibly if we want at some point or a few points during its life and not have to worry about the deck getting too thin and working down to the corking line um, and then having to sort that out. So we're going to go for a touch thicker deck planking around the boat, I reckon. Um, but before all that, we need our portholes in the cabin side so that we can roll fiberglass over the top of the cabin and down. Um, that is quite important to get that all sealed before we think about sticking wood down. So now I'm going to go into our pile of wood and select some nice quarter sawn timber at the correct lengths and um, machine it up and let it dry. That is the plan.